Good morning, everyone. I hope you're doing well and are having a flare-free day. Today's video, I wanted to shed light on a new period symptom that I have been noticing show up unannounced during the first day of my period and leading into the second and third days of my period. I never had this symptom growing up. I never had this symptom show up until two years ago when I gave birth to my daughter. Two years ago, I recognized that when my period started to return after giving birth, obviously it takes some time after you give birth for your period to show back up, but um, the first one that came after giving birth, I noticed I had a severe migraine, like not even headaches, slight headaches, like throbbing. It was like a full on migraine. It's always on the right side for me, like temple and then into my jaw I've noticed and it was kind of like I'm putting this as a one-off experience during that first initial period back after giving birth because my body had gone through a lot of change I thought it was just okay this is just how my body is healing itself and I was very hopeful that <laughs> I was holding on to hope that it wouldn't be a continuous symptom that I would see or experience every period and unfortunately I have been documenting and like give or take a couple of periods I always have a throbbing migraine on my right side the migraine itself is excruciating and if you've had migraines you know like they're not a fun experience to live with for myself I need to be in the dark so that I'm not impacted by any light because I find it makes it worse if there's light or a light on I find any noise is causing it to be worse, any distraction. I just find like, it just is not a great symptom. And on top of that, I feel like they're somewhat getting worse over time. Um, since the two years ago from giving birth, I find that I'm on the edge of needing to be sick. And so this past period, which happened a couple of days ago, which was the first day of my period, I had probably the worst migraine I've had since giving birth. And um, I have a clip in here about that experience and I never do clips about my flares. I just don't have <laughs> the capacity to turn on the camera. But um, this time I was like, I wanna document what's actually happening so I can talk about it with you now and like have a fresh perspective of what I was going through then. And during that episode of migraine period related symptoms, I needed to be sick as well. And that's when I'm recognizing that the pain and throbbing is getting to a point where I need to alleviate some pressure in my body. That's the way I, like my body feels and that's how it's like reacting to the pain of the headache or migraine that I need to be sick. So during that episode recently, this past week, I had this huge migraine. I wanted to be sick and was sick. And even after being sick, the migraine lasted into the evening. It was really hard to go to sleep or fall asleep. I was up at 1 and 2 a.m. with it still throbbing. Like there was no real relief from it, even after taking medication. It just was like breaking through the medication I found for me. And so a couple of days had passed and I still found that I was having a bit of tenderness is like the best word for it. It wasn't the migraine. It was just like the leftover residue of that episode of painful migraine symptom related to my period. And so I knew today's video, I wanted to do a little bit of background scientific research on whether headaches or migraines were common around our periods, and they are, and I'll get into the research there shortly, but there are different types of migraines that happen. There are different types of reasons why you may feel a migraine or headache come on during or before your period. And so today's video, we're gonna dive into migraines and periods and how they are related. And I'd be curious to hear down below if you experience migraines during your period or leading up to it. I am so sorry if you do. On top of all the other symptoms that you may have with your endometriosis or other chronic condition, but I am like, I don't know what's worse, like the pelvic excruciating pain or the throbbing head pain where you have to throw up. Like, I can't decide which one is like, better or worse if I had to like pick one to have like it's ha huh, it's a lot when you have a chronic illness and you have symptoms like this show up unannounced and this is where I kind of touch upon why the relationship with your body is a bit or my body at least is 
um, complicated and complex because you feel like you have your body figured out, you feel like you have your symptoms down pat, you know what medication helps you, or like natural pain remedies that help you through it. And for the longest time, truly the longest time opposed to like two years ago, I knew my symptoms, I knew what triggered them, I knew what was happening. And then after giving birth, there's this new symptom of migraines that I never had in my arsenal of things to know when or to expect when my period arrived. And it's just, I'm navigating a new symptom on top of other ones that have been there forever. And I'm just realizing that our bodies are unique and different. And I say this a lot too in my videos, but it also goes to show that our own bodies are unique and sometimes they can change even if we feel like we know them <laughs> or have gotten to know them. Um, and they just end up changing on us and that's, that's life. And I'm navigating, it's been two years now, but the migraine piece, I just am still trying to navigate on top of it all, especially as a mom, it's really tricky. And you'll see in the clips here how that episode recently this past week was very, it was obviously painful, but the hard part was hearing my daughter and my like fiance, Nick in the kitchen and they were laughing and just having dinner and I was like in the bathroom and I could hear all of it happening and I was like, I want to be out there with them and not in here having this flare up. Obviously, I don't want my daughter to see me in pain. And so it's kind of like I'm sheltering myself away during that experience. And that was really hard too. Like you're trying to figure out your body and how it changes, but you're also trying to figure out and navigate motherhood and how your chronic illness can really impact your ability to show up when you want to. And so here's a little clip of this past week in the past episode of my migraine. Um, but again, I'd be curious to hear down below if you experience them as well. Great right now. <sighs> I can hear them in the kitchen. Be obviously a very difficult video to look back on for myself, but I wanted to document that that is the reality that comes with a chronic condition, that symptoms show up unannounced. You're kind of thrown to the floor basically of trying to deal with it, sometimes on your own, when life continues beside you. And that is like a weird juxtaposition of you're trying to figure out your body and heal yourself while life moves on. So according to the National Headache Foundation, there are more than 23 different types of headaches that exist. And I for one did not know that there are so many categories to headaches. I just thought, oh, I have a headache or a migraine and that was it. But apparently there are 23 different types. Women are three times more likely than men to experience a migraine. So the percentage there is 26% of women to 8% of men. During a migraine, what you typically may feel, but obviously this is not a conclusive list, is throbbing on one side or both sides of your temples. So for myself, I felt it really throbbing on the like front temple side of my right side of my head. I also felt some pain linger into the lower jaw and I felt nausea. I felt a lot of like, I need to alleviate this pressure by being sick. Some individuals may see black dots appear. You may experience unusual smells, tingling in the area of your temples or jaw. You may also experience some numbness or weakness in areas of your body. And you may also have trouble speaking. When it comes to a migraine with an aura, um, typically the aura will present itself 10 to 30 minutes before a migraine presents itself. So you might have altered or unusual motor experiences or sensory experiences that last 10 to 30 minutes prior to that migraine. Following that 30 minutes, you might start to feel that numbness, tingling, throbbing pain start to take place. People may experience sensitivity to light or sound during these episodes. They may also experience a sensation of nausea and vomiting. Migraines are often typically seen on one side of the temple with a pulsing or throbbing sensation with them. 
When it comes to the American Migraine Foundation, they have identified five different types of migraines. So there are 23 different types of headaches, but breaking that down to migraines, there are five different types. Migraine with an aura, again, that preceding 10 to 30 minutes of I feel something coming on and that it's kind of a warning that a migraine may take place soon. A migraine without an aura. So with this, there's no real warning sign or aura that comes along with it. You typically just start to feel that throbbing pain sensation on one side of your body. Migraines without head pain. When I saw this option, I was like, what? is this? What's going on here? An aura is typically experienced, which is that kind of warning sensation of something feels a little off, but I'm not really impacted by it with the pain and throbbing in the head. These are often called silent migraines, or again, the migraine without the head pain. Hemiplegic migraines are unique in the sense that with this type of migraine, you will experience the one-sided pain and throbbing on your temples or your head, but you may also experience that linger all the way down your body on that side. So you might feel some weakness or tingling on your shoulders, your arms, and your legs. Retinal migraines. With this type of migraine, you will experience that throbbing and pain on the one side of your head or temple, but you will also or may also experience some um, sensation of you can't see out of that eye that's on that side of the throbbing and pain. It could lead to a temporary loss of sight. So that type of migraine may last a couple of minutes or hours or even days where you have that sensation of I'm not fully seeing out of that eye that had the migraine to it. There is usually full recovery of that eyesight following the migraines episode. And finally, a chronic migraine. This is where you feel the presence of a migraine either 15 days out of the month, but the intensity of this migraine may vary during the month. Know that I'm thinking of you if you do experience any of these types of migraines or headaches. So when it comes to the time of our period or the time of ovulation, you may experience the rise and fall of certain hormones. Approximately 60% of women experience some sort of headache or migraine around the time of ovulation or at the time of their period. So either a couple of days leading up to when they start to bleed, the first day of their period, or in the middle of their period. So 60%. So knowing that, I know I'm not alone, but I wish this wasn't a symptom for 60% of us. There is a classification also known as a menstrual migraine, and a menstrual migraine may or may not have an aura preceding it. Typically, when it's around the time of your period, your estrogen levels drop significantly. During the time of our periods, or the day leading up to, or during, you have very low estrogen levels. And because of this, oftentimes headaches and migraines do take place. During a PMS headache or a menstrual menstrual syndrome headache, you may experience pain and throbbing on both sides of your temples and that sensation of nausea and vomiting. You also experience fatigue along with skin changes and constipation may also show up for you. So you might be wondering if I'm taking birth control or oral contraceptives, am I more likely to experience a headache and migraine around the time of my period? And research has outlined that yes, unfortunately those that are on birth control or oral contraceptives, a symptom around the time of your period may be increased likelihood of headaches and migraines. Another unique stat here is that when it comes to supplementary hormones, so birth control being one of them, there's an increased um, supplement of estrogen, but there was a study done that for women taking progesterone dominant pills, so you think of Vizan as one option where it's a progesterone dominant pill to support different types of chronic pains and illnesses like endometriosis, it's typically a prescribed medication. When it comes to progesterone dominant pills, the likelihood of migraines and headaches around the time of our periods significantly dropped. So that was unique to read about, that that type of hormone treatment where it's not estrogen focused, it's more progesterone focused, can cause a different type of symptom reaction around the time of our period, especially when it comes to headaches and migraines. If you are receiving hormonal interventions for your endometriosis pain management, it might be important to kind of recognize and jot down if you are experiencing any migraines or headaches, or of course, any types of different symptoms while on any new or changed medication. But hormone intervention aside, for endometriosis patients that weren't taking any hormone intervention like birth control or Vizan or other progesterone dominant pills, those suffering with endometriosis with the disease itself were 1.7 times more likely to experience migraines around the time of their period as opposed to people without endometriosis. There was a study done of 985 individuals with endometriosis and out of those 985 individuals, migraines and headaches showed up for 79% of individuals. 
the authors of this study had kind of presumed or hypothesized that endometriosis lesions that had developed in the body had caused a hypersensitized nervous system. So it just goes to show in that study that there are a lot of individuals that do suffer with migraines and headaches because of endometriosis. Another outline of data had shown that young individuals, so those in elementary school and high school, had a higher rate of migraines and headaches around the time of their period if they were suffering with endometriosis. Recently, the experience of having increased migraines for elementary and high school students have been a precursor telltale sign for early intervention to investigate endometriosis. So obviously when it comes to our hormones, specifically the sex hormones produced in our body, they aren't produced at a high quantity in the body, but obviously any slight changes or fluctuations in hormones like estrogen can cause a severe reaction for our body like headaches, migraines, and other symptoms that show up around the time of our period. So definitely something important to write down or jot down in your journal if migraines and headaches are a new symptom for you as they are for me and any other type of symptom, definitely go talk to your doctor because you never know what type of pain management might be out there to support you in your journey. Obviously, when it comes to endometriosis more specifically or any chronic condition, it's important to have like a multidisciplinary approach to pain management and treatment options for symptoms that show up. You may want to seek out the recommendation of a neurologist alongside your family doctor, gynecologist, pelvic floor therapist, just have that multidisciplinary type of care to talk about the migraines and headaches that you're experiencing on a potentially daily, monthly, or yearly basis. It's really important to get that advice from someone in the field of medicine that studies the brain and migraines to get a fulsome approach of what's happening with your body to get the answers that you deserve. So treatment options that kind of worked for me and kind of I'll say because it was really difficult to get through that experience, but outside of medication, I'm going to talk about what helped me kind of soothe me and make me feel a little bit more supported in that experience while alone. So the first thing that I did was that I turned on my shower into a warm or lukewarm temperature to help provide like a warm hug for myself to feel supported. The sensation of having water on my shoulders kind of alleviated that tension that I was holding. So if it was associated with a tension headache, potentially, I was kind of supporting myself with that of just like, okay, let the warm water get over my shoulders and my neck in this situation. I also was like in a fetal position in the shower. I wasn't standing because I didn't want to like fall or lose balance or like have like a sensory change where I would put myself in a little bit more harm's way with that. So it helped me because I was also experiencing like cramping and, and pelvic pain during that experience. But the headache kind of just like overtook all of those sensations for me that first day. So I just kind of like curled up into a fetal position like that video, but in the shower allowing the water to kind of take over my back and shoulders and I could just focus on breathing instead of like my balance in the shower. When I was out of the shower, what I did was I reduced the amount of light that was coming into the bathroom. So um, when I went back to the fetal position in my cozy comfy robe, like something warm and cozy that wasn't tight around my stomach, um, I turned down the amount of lights that were on in the bathroom to kind of alleviate the sensory overload that would kind of make my migraine worse. So if you're able to kind of have a nightlight available in the bathroom or wherever you are experiencing that migraine, um, also something you could do is have the bathroom lights off if you're in the bathroom, in the fetal position type of environment, um, but have your hall door open to the bathroom so there's some type of light coming in, but it's not like full blown in your face in that room. Um, I also laid down in my bed. So after I was able to kind of find my balance again and like the interim between throbbing pain in my head and the pelvic pain, I made my way to my bed and I laid down. I called through my phone that I had to Nick that was in the kitchen to, to grab water for myself as well as a garbage can. So I was not able to move from bed to bathroom easily in that environment. So I didn't want to spend my whole night either in the bathroom. So I moved to the bed and I had a bowl with a garbage bag around it and I was sick in bed, but that's sometimes the reality when you're not able to move your body and us endo patients know that. So that kind of helped me feel comfortable without having to get up and go different places. So if you're um, living on your own or don't have someone home at the time, maybe just set up a garbage 
can with a, a bag in it beside your bed. If you do experience your period symptoms coming forward while you're alone, it's already kind of set up for you if you do experience that nausea or vomiting kind of coming forward. Honestly, I just kind of like with any endo symptom, like had to ride it out. Um, but having that warmth and low light and garbage can available, like made the experience a little more comfortable. <laughs> if I can say that. I'd be curious to hear down below what you do to help make you feel a little bit more supported and comfortable during a migraine or headache. I'm sure any advice that you have would be supportive for somebody looking for answers in their journey. But again, always important to go talk to your doctor about migraines and headaches that you're having around the time of your period or around ovulation. With that, I hope this video has been informative in some way and um, a little bit eye-opening about what I'm going through with my new symptoms. Uh, related to my period. Um, we're in it together. <laughs> Honestly, like I do these videos to show that you're not alone. And although it can be really hard to navigate new symptoms and pain, you're really strong. And I know that it's really painful to go through in the moment, but the joy is that there's a better moment coming around the corner for you. You're not alone in it and that your doctor is there to help you every step of the way to get answers and you are deserving of answers so again if you're not getting the answers or support that you need it's always good to get a second opinion so with that i cannot wait to talk to you on the next one